everyone! Today I wanted to do a video on chronic idiopathic neutropenia. This is something that I personally have. So what does that even mean? Let's break down the words one by one. So chronic, as defined, is an illness persisting for a long time or constantly occurring. Then we have chronic neutropenia, which is defined as neutropenia lasting longer than two months until who knows when. It may go away eventually, or it might be a lifelong thing. For me personally, it's been around, I think it started at around 2011. That's when I started getting sick a lot versus my diagnosis, which was like last month or something. Then we have the term idiopathic. And idiopathic means they don't know what's causing it. They have done tests, and they have researched and looked into it and put me through a bone marrow biopsy and they still don't know why it's there. It's an anomaly really. So and then we have neutropenia. Neutropenia is a condition associated with a low white blood cell count, specifically the neutrophils, which are made in the bone marrow and fight off infections. Neutrophils prevent infections by warding them off and by blocking particles and microorganisms. They basically are the ones that throw down with the bacteria, more specifically, as well as helping trigger proper immune responses. This is something that you can't give to somebody else. If anything, you're more worried about them giving you something because you probably can't fight it off too well. It's actually often associated with chemotherapy because the chemo will just blast the neutrophils and they're like, oh crap, now I have neutropenia. But that wouldn't be the chronic persisting neutropenia. It would just be something that you're dealing with alongside cancer. And one does not always mean the other. So that's a whole thing on its own. So like I said earlier, my journey probably started around 2011. I just was always sick and when I would get sick, it wouldn't go away and like two weeks later, I would be sick again. The holidays were the absolute worst because I work with the general public and their children and whoever else wants to come in. So I was just really exposed to a lot for a long amount of time, which meant, yeah, I was just that person that was always sick in the back of class. I was that person who would have to call out all the time because they were sick and not just because they were lazy, which would sometimes be the perception of me even though that wasn't the truth. I also noticed that whenever I would get really stressed out, I would then get really sick really quickly. It would be like I would have a fight with somebody I cared about and the next couple of days later, I would get sick with a cold or sometimes it would be worse. Sometimes it would be bronchitis, you know, that kind of a thing. And actually when you are stressed out, it does affect your immune system. It affects specifically your lymphocytes, I think I'm pronouncing that right, I really hope that I am, which are not neutrophils, but they're also a white blood cell. And when you're stressed out, you do release stress hormones. And the specific stress hormone that affects your lymphocytes are called corticosteroids, and they suppress the effectiveness of the immune system. So then you have two different types of white blood cells that just aren't cutting it. So about four or five months ago, I had realized that I was sick a lot, and I had really needed to see a doctor for about a decade. So I made an appointment for blood work in May of this year. Year, and that's when we found out that my neutrophil counts were really low. My counts were at 220. 220. And granted, I had no idea at the time what neutropenia even was. So I'm just like, okay, well that's all. I'll just keep on doing me, right? That's fine. So my doctor called me back and she told me that, hey, you know, this isn't normal. It's not great. We're going to have you come back and get you tested again. And what essentially happened was for about a month, they just kept testing me. Sometimes you can get viruses that will affect the system for longer amounts of time and that will affect your neutrophils. So she was trying to rule that out. Meanwhile, I had to stop going to work which was a whole other thing completely, but I'll get to that eventually. So then a month goes by, they're not really getting that much better. It's between like a high 200 and a low 400, which is not cute. So then I started seeing an oncologist, which more so specializes in disorders and cancer and stuff like that. And from there, we scheduled a bone marrow biopsy. So they were going to essentially go into where the neutrophils are made and extract a little bit of my bone and see if the neutrophils are being made properly or if it's a bone marrow issue. As it turns out, my bone marrow is producing the right amount of neutrophils. They're just not lasting long and we don't know why. You know, the good die young. <laughs> So. so in this scenario, one minute you're fine, the next minute you're quarantined indefinitely. And they're shipping you off to the hospital and you're freaking out. And then you get nurses who make really bad jokes and stress you the hell out. So there aren't 
affect a lot as far as symptoms go. There is definitely an increased risk of getting sick and not being able to fight things off as well as somebody who does not have a compromised immune system. And then there are some cases where infections may result in life-threatening complications. You can also experience fatigue. I also have hypothyroidism. So fatigue and me are like this, like there's, there's no escape in it. You can also get mouth sores and sore throats. This is something that I experienced, specifically sore throats. And that's when I can identify when it was starting to get worse was when I had a sore throat, but not like strep or anything for a few months and it was just persistent. I thought it was allergies. It's not allergies, it turned out. Or maybe it's also allergies. Maybe it's both. <laughs> you may also have persistent low-grade fevers. I don't think this is something that actually affects me, but there is also that. So if you are neutropenic, there are some things you should look out for. They are as follows. You should probably avoid buffets unless you're the very first person there because you don't know who has meddled with the food and possibly contaminated it. I've personally seen things and it's gross. And with buffets there are things like community dinners or potlucks as well as fast food. With community food it would probably be okay like buffets if you're the first one there um, but if it's been sitting up for a few hours and randos have been picking at it for a while you don't know what they're all about. Definitely avoid that if you can. You should avoid a lot of raw things. In short the neutropenic diet is pretty much everything in your life is super cooked and processed. There are no raw fruits and vegetables. If you have any vegetables they are cooked through all the way. You should avoid yogurts with live cultures. You should certainly avoid drinking tap water. Any water you drink should be filtered. You should avoid raw sushi and kombucha, things like blue cheese and raw cheeses and cheeses with mold in them. Actually, a lot of cheeses do have mold in them that are the fancier cheeses. Not your average craft if you left it in the refrigerator for too long and it's spoiled. Cheeses like gorgonzola and roquefort are things you should probably avoid. Some people with neutropenia technically should not eat leftovers. Spaghetti is good, but not after it's been out for a week. You don't know what's been happening in those noodles. Obviously, you should shower every day. It's important to wash all that gunk off of you and keep your hygiene A+. Plus. Don't forget to wash your hands, please. Don't forget to wash your hands. It's important. And as far as makeup goes, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the products that you use are being taken care of properly. You're not gonna to wanna to use brushes that you have not cleaned out in over two years. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't stick your fingers into anything you're going to apply to your face constantly because when you put your fingers in something, you don't always know what's on your fingers and then it gets into the thing and then it breathes. You're probably going to want to limit your exposure to the general public and you're gonna to want to avoid anybody that you know for a fact is sick or has recently had a live vaccine because that could possibly affect you and that could be bad. If you have cats, you should probably try to find somebody to scoop the litter box for you. Thankfully, my boyfriend has volunteered his tribute and I am so thankful. <laughs> You also should avoid cleaning fish tanks or pretty much anything that would involve you coming into close contact with feces. I'll be okay without doing that. If you have a cute cat like this one, I love you. Seriously, never declaw your cats. It's painful, but make sure that their nails are kept pretty short and research them. Because if they scratch you, that could be a way for you to get an infection, and that's not good. They're so cute, and I love her so much, but her nails, look at them. Wah! Actually, I clipped them last night, so they're not that bad. When I first found out that I had what I know is chronic idiopathic neutropenia, I got real depressed, and I googled a lot. And because it's a rare blood disorder, there are not a lot of people to talk to about it, and there isn't a whole lot known about it. As far as I know, there isn't even a treatment for it. Before being diagnosed, I was not a germaphobe. I was careful in making sure that I wash my hands before I eat and stuff like that, but when I got diagnosed, it was a whole other level of kind of just panic and not really knowing what to do and really making myself a hermit in my home. I'm naturally kind of a hermit anyway, so it was really easy for me to fall into a cycle of just being in my house constantly and really being afraid of going out anywhere. And that is something you have to think on, make a conscientious decision on what you want to do. And ultimately, if you let it get to your core, it can affect your quality of life. So you do have to really look at it and determine for yourself what you want to do. I would say definitely listen to your doctor and take whatever they say into very high consideration before you decide to go to a sushi buffet and drink kombucha while not washing your hands. But, I mean, do you? Also because I was sick so regularly, and as you can see, I like wearing makeup. 
So when I was sick, people thought that I wasn't sick because I'd be downing an energy drink and caking makeup onto my face to appear okay, when in fact I was not okay. And then that backfires real bad. And it is an invisible disorder, so people would look at me and be like, what, you're fine. There's nothing wrong with you. You're fine. Oh my god, you're fine. And they'll tell you things like, well, I don't know why you're sick all the time. You clearly don't take care of yourself. Maybe you should drink some water and take some vitamins. They'll assume things that are untrue about you and it's not fun. <laughs> you should see my bathroom. There are so many vitamins cram packed into every nook and cranny. It's insane. I have a small plethora of turmeric and Maltese and elderberry and so many things. And it definitely can affect your job if you're calling out a lot because you're sick and you just can't deal because you know you're super sick. People can easily assume that you're lazy or that you don't want to be there or that you're burnt out or whatever they want to say, you know? And you can't pay attention to them because you know that you're dealing with something and they don't know your life like you know your life, but it does hurt. So here are some things that might help. I'm gonna go grab the things. So I grabbed what I have so I can show you. I do have a black reusable mask that has currently gone missing. So I don't know where that is right now. But I also do have these disposable face masks. <laughs> Not sponsored. These are from, I guess the company is called FWPP. I got this from Amazon for like maybe $10. And there are a bunch of different colors in here. There's some at the bottom that are black and then we have some white ones and some blue ones. And these aren't as sturdy as my reusable black one is this because these are not meant to be for sturdy they're just meant to be there and help you like that sounds sick so we put it on like that and there we go you got a mask on this one you can kind of well i think this is actually upside down let's try this again so this one you can mold it closer to where your face needs it to be although you will occasionally have it slide up and hit you in the eyeballs so there is this tangled up in your earrings as well so you probably should just avoid earrings if you're wearing a mask but this will help um my boyfriend occasionally uses my reusable masks to paint his warhammer figurines or occasionally he'll also use them when he's cleaning out the litter box and he really likes them a lot just to have i definitely recommend having some of these if you are neutropenic or if you just have a hard time scooping the cat box that'll help then i also have just some average equate examination gloves. These are good just if there's anything gross in the house that you don't want to touch. Also, if you decide to clean the cat box yourself, that would be something you might be interested in. Now they're just there for when I need them, so I appreciate that. Thank you, Equate. You're also going to want to make sure that your air filters are properly maintained. I didn't realize it, but our air filter in our apartment had actually needed to be changed for about six months. And then we left the house for about a week because my roommate was sick. And I realized, wow, the air quality when we're staying at now is so much better better than where we live. I called maintenance and they came and they cleaned out our air filter which was caked with a bunch of dust and dirt. I got myself a part two air purifier and I really like it. It's real cute. If you do want to get one of these, I got this one online on Amazon for I think it was between 50 and 60. It does have like a silent mode but we like it because we enjoy the white noise when we're trying to sleep. You are going to want to make sure that whatever air purifier you select has a very easy filter that you can change regularly. Really. There are some sections of comments that I've seen online for certain air purifiers of people complaining that they can't find the filters for their air purifier anymore. So you're going to want to make sure that those are easily accessible to you. It can keep it for a long time and get a lot of use out of it. If you want to go the herbal route, there are some things that can boost your immune system and help you fight off icky stuff. I really like turmeric. I feel like it does actually help boost my immune system, so I take that daily. I also really like elderberry because I can also feel that that works when I take it. I would say to go the liquid route with the elderberry syrup because first of all it's delicious and I think that it just preserves its components a little better than the capsules. I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm just saying that's what I like. You can also try frankincense essential oil if you're interested. I like how it smells and I have tried it before. I don't really know if it's worked that well. I really like also carrying some hand sanitizer. I have maybe three that I choose from put my different purses to make sure that when I go out I do have hand sanitizer because you're gonna be touching things and unless you want to be the one with <laughs> the blue gloves and the blue mask on and people staring at you just you know put on some hand sanitizer and make sure you wash your hands and you go home and that should help a lot and on that note antibacterial soap is nice 
So I am encouraging people to talk about it because that would be great. Because in all actuality, I had no idea that it even existed. So if the medical field could focus on that a little bit more because people are talking about it, that would be awesome. So thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Please always remember to wash your hands. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see y'all later. Bye guys.